None of us like having bugs or creepy crawlies in our home, and if we see one, we put on our heaviest boots and stomp on those bad boys. But there surely is an easier way to deal with them, perhaps a way that prevents from invading our homes at all. Well, guess what? There isn't just one way, there are loads. These are effective ways to get rid of insects at home. Number 15. How to get rid of house flies. Now, I don't know how you feel about them, but house flies gross me out so much. I spend the summer sleeping around my house, armed with a flip flop and a truckload of rage. It does occasionally end up in a mess of broken crockery and bruises, but I usually get them. Sometimes it causes a lot of carnage, but perhaps there's a more simple and less violent technique. One of the most effective techniques is to zap the critters. It's still a little bit like carnage though. A light trap, which attracts house flies with its alluring glow and then zaps the unsuspecting critter with a low voltage electric current is pretty efficient at killing them. As long as you aren't bothered by the smell of frying house flies, that is. If that technique is a bit too extreme or even too repulsive, you can try to just keep everything super clean so that there's nothing to attract them there in the first place. That's really anything that's stinky. Or maybe you should just get a bunch of spiders who can make webs. And don't forget the time-honored tradition of flip-flop fly swatting, of course. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 14 the best ways to get rid of cockroaches. Now, nobody wants to discover that their home is infested with cockroaches, but if you, like many people, have a really shady landlord who's rented you a moldy apartment, or perhaps a neighbor with a nasty trash can, or let's face it, you just get unfortunate, roaches are a reality. So let's look at a way to get rid of these creeps. Boric acid is a substance that can be found in loads of places around your home and in things that you use every day, stuff like laundry detergent and even toothpaste. In low doses, it's relatively harmless to humans and their pets, but applied in the right way and you can rid your home of those pesky roaches. All you have to do is mix up a solution of boric acid and sugar along with water and then squirt it around the right combination in order to attract them and then dispatch them. Be sure to look up a good recipe in order to get your ratios correct though, because obviously you don't wanna muck around with chemicals if you're not sure what you're doing or if they're likely to be touched or eaten by children or your precious pets. Number 13, best ways to get rid of mosquitoes. Depending on where you are in the world, mosquitoes can be a nuisance or they can literally kill you. So knowing some ways to get rid of them is not only handy if you want to avoid the itch, but it could also save a life. When you consider that mosquitoes can spread infections like malaria, dengue fever, and the Zika virus, along with West Nile disease, it's probably just best to avoid a mosquito bite whenever possible. Often, the pests are most irritating in outside areas where you might want to enjoy a warm evening with friends and family. There are things you can do, however, to plant and put the mosquitoes off like trying lavender or rosemary or sage on your patio. Remove or treat anywhere with standing water in your yard. That's because mosquitoes lay their eggs in there. Ugh. Inside, you can sleep under mosquito nets. They can be quite romantic if you're into a princessy sort of style, of course. Or you could even try a plug-in repellent. This sends out a consistent bug-zapping toxin. But if you want a more natural and alternative way, just try burning sage and rosemary. This has the added benefit of feeling a little bit witchy, so it's a win-win. The big bad bug killer that is the fallback when all else fails is to use any of the available mosquito repellents that contain DEET. This stuff is one surefire way to keep the pesky biters away. Always use it as directed though. Don't be silly. Number 12. 
Casting a fire ant colony in aluminum. Ants are super pesky pests, that's a given, but once you've found them in your garden or even a row of them marching into your kitchen, you know you're in for trouble. These teeny tiny creatures can be tricky to get rid of once they've found a place to hang out. Fire ants, well, they suck even worse. If you've ever sat in the grass for a while before realizing that there is an ant's nest under your rear, then you know already that these little critters bite. A bunch of artists at the University of Redlands in California created an extreme way to capture a fire ant colony. They cast it into molten metal. Sounds like a little bit of overkill. Well, in all fairness, they were exploring the possibilities of merging the art world and the natural world rather than just trying to exterminate the insects. A biology professor and two art professors at the university built a makeshift crucible in order to melt the chosen aluminum to a fire ant destructing 1200 degrees Fahrenheit and then poured the liquid metal into the ant hill. Then once it had all cooled down, they dug out the results. Cast in metal, the intricate network of underground tunnels was no longer a source of annoying, painful, biting insects. They had all met their doom, encased in a molten metal. But rather, it had become an extraordinary work of art. Number 11. How to get rid of bed bugs. Everyone's heard at least one horror story about hotel bed bugs. These are becoming such a huge problem in New York City that even super fancy hotels are suffering from the scourge of the skin crawling bed bug epidemic. These disgusting biters hide themselves in cracks and crevices, behind headboards, and underneath of mattresses, just waiting for their prey to sleep into a slumber, and then they bite, leaving horribly itchy and unpleasant bumps across the bodies of their victims. And they even stow away in your luggage. So just when you think you've escaped the gross bed bug hotel, you then discover they've crept into your suitcase, and now they live with you. You need a bed bug exterminator stat. Some techniques for getting rid of bed bugs include vacuuming them up and any areas that they've been around. However, this has to be done on a daily basis and the vacuum thoroughly emptied and the contents disposed of outside every single time. Putting things that are infested in a tumble dryer on the highest heat may kill off the bugs, but be careful of melting things and follow instructions. Or you could put things in the freezer to kill an infestation. Steam cleaning, as long as it's at least 130 degrees Fahrenheit, could help, but sometimes you're just gonna have to get rid of that mattress and have it set on fire. Bed bugs are tricky little blighters and will make a big commitment to tackle on your own. There are some things you can try, but it may be something best sorted by a professional. Number 10. Simple ways to get rid of fruit flies in your home. That banana that's been sitting in your fruit bowl getting brown and squishy, it's not only disgusting, but it's beginning to attract attention. Fruit flies quickly begin buzzing around any soft, ripening, or fermenting foods, and they're especially partial to that neglected fruit bowl. They like to lay their eggs on moist, organic matter, so that banana is just perfect. Don't puke now, I know it's disgusting. Fruit flies are incredibly fast at reproducing, from egg to adult in about a week's time. This is one of the reasons they can be tricky to remove once they've set up shop in your home. They just keep on making more babies. Don't think about it too much, it might give you nightmares. First things first though, you're going to need to get rid of that banana. Wrap it up and put it straight out into the outside trash. Then try to find what other moist based foods they may migrate to next, and then you know what to do. Once you've gotten rid of all the suspicious looking fresh produce or put away your groceries into the refrigerator, the little flyers may still be hanging around your space. If you need to do a final sweep of the area, there are a couple of traps that you can lay to remove any remaining fruit flies. There are a couple of school science project style ways to trap them as well. Make a trap using a glass with a little bit of apple cider vinegar in the bottom. Stretch plastic wrap over the top and then pop over an elastic band in order to hold it into place. Poke a couple of little holes in the top and presto! You can watch the fruit flies gather in the glass, but then they won't be able to escape. 
<laughs> Another quick fix for the fruit fly cleanup operation is to place a small dish with a little vinegar on the side in your kitchen. Add three drops of dish soap to the mixture and then leave it for the flies. It may be a little bit stinky, but with a little science magic, the dish soap reduces the surface tension of the liquid and as the flies land, they're just simply going to sink. Oh, you're such an evil mad scientist now, aren't you? Number nine, how to get rid of gnats. The gnat is another dinky little flying creature that despite its size can cause massive destruction. Fungus gnats love houseplants and not the way that you do. These pests are into the soil of your precious plant babies. And when they're a little flying insect, fungal gnats, although annoying, aren't too much danger to the plant. It's when they begin laying their eggs in the soil that the trouble really begins. The larval stage of the gnat's development is when the gnat larvae all snugs up in the soil of your potted plant and begins to feed on the nutrients in the soil itself and then on the roots of the plants. And that's not really going to make for a happy herb. So what can be done? Well, first, just keep a close eye on your plants. Don't water them too much because fungus gnats love damp soil. So letting the top inch or two dry out may help to prevent the larvae from developing. You can also try a variety of insecticides that kill them off. Check out your local garden center. Or less chemically, there are sticky traps. They literally trap the bugs on their sticky surface. There are also nematodes, tiny worms that are used as a biological solution to all kinds of plant-eating pests. These worms, well, they just simply munch their way through the offending insects. So that's a job well done. You just have to be okay with microscopic worms hanging out on your plants after that. Number eight, how to get rid of drain flies. Tiny furry flying insects seem to be very attracted to your drains or even your bathtub. Well, these are probably drain flies. They're not really harmful, but let's be honest, it's pretty gross to have any kind of swarm of insects in your house, and nobody wants to battle through a cloud of bugs in order to run a relaxing bubble bath, now do they? So what can you do to get rid of these bothersome blighters? Well, fortunately, there are plenty of simple natural solutions to rid your pipework of the pesky drain fly. The simplest of all, Pour boiling hot water down all the plug holes a couple of times a day for about a week. You could also try putting a mix of a half cup of salt, half cup of baking soda, and a cup of vinegar down the drain, and then washing it all down with boiling water. Or you could even get a good brushing with a metal pipe brush, followed up with, you guessed it, lots of boiling water. I guess that drain flies are really not fans of the old boiling water trick. So if I were you, that's where I'd begin. Number seven, how to get rid of fleas. Is anyone feeling itchy up to this point? All this chatting about insects and biting, and it's setting me off pretty well. It's bad enough to try to keep your pet flea free, but what happens when you realize the infestation is coming from inside the house? Once you've successfully defleed your pet, you may well need to deflee your entire homestead. Carpets, bedding, even floorboards all offer these itch-making critters places to hide and hatch and make a ruddy nuisance of themselves. These persistent insects take some shifting, First, you're gonna have to wash all the bedding and throws and pillows, you know, everything that's made of fabric, basically, in hot water with detergent. Then you have to vacuum everything else, your carpets, your floors, even in between your floorboards, your linoleum, your curtains, everything. Then you're gonna have to use a chemical flea control treatment. This is really the only way to actually kill them or you could resort to calling an exterminator. Then after all of that work, be sure to keep your pet flea free with regular treatments or you're gonna have to go through it all over again. Number six, how to get rid of moths in every part of your home. I'm still really kind of peeved at the greedy moths that spent a whole season munching through some of my favorite sweaters. I don't even know how those fat pests could have flown after what they managed to put away. Moths, they're a total pain. 
And now we find out that most of the stuff that we had been using to get rid of them is probably super poisonous to us as well. So now what do we do? Well, we just have to go looking around like we joined a punk band or we're taking a 90s grunge trend too far. Here are a couple of tips that may help. Wash everything that you can in hot water and also use detergent. Then dry them at a medium to high heat. It should kill off any remaining larvae. Vacuum everything. The closet itself, any carpets, the drawers, everything. Then chuck out the contents of the vacuum immediately into the outside trash. Scrub all the surfaces down, and then hopefully, with fingers crossed, that's going to end up doing the trick. Obviously, these are some sneaky creatures, and they can hide away anywhere, so you never know when they might come back. Number 5. How to get rid of centipedes An invasion of centipedes? Kind of sounds like a 1950s B-movie plot. However, if you've got a problem with these excessively legged critters, it could seem like a walking nightmare. Handy hints for removing centipedes include keeping things nice and dry. A damp place is a centipede's favorite thing, so if your house is a little bit swampy, these creepers are going to love it. So dry it out, using packs of silica to dry damp areas or even a dehumidifier. Clean everything up. These creatures are going to go where the food is, and in this case, that's where other insects are. So get rid of all the other creepy crawlies in your home, and the centipedes will shuffle off in search of a better place for dinner. Then seal up all the gaps that insects can get through. Stop giving them places to hang out. Centipedes love damp and moldy organic stuff, so if you have a heap of logs or a load of junk outside your house, they're probably living in there as well. Move these things away from the home, because they're less likely to make the journey from the wood pile inside if it's not right next to your house. Obvious, but easy. And if all else fails, you can sprinkle cayenne pepper around where they might get in. But this is a pretty messy business, and how many centipedes do you actually have in your house for crying out loud? Number 4. How to get rid of spiders and spider webs. These pesky critters seem to be able to find a way into your house no matter what you try to do to keep them out. They're especially fond of creeping around in old buildings and can squeeze through incredibly tiny spaces. During mating season, spiders are especially persistent. Male spiders seeking a mate will suddenly turn up everywhere until they find a lady spider. If spiders give you the heebie-jeebies or you're just fed up with their webs draping all over your furniture, giving your pad a decidedly Adams Family vibe when you were really hoping for more of a luxurious look, there are a couple of anti-spider tips for you. It seems obvious, but you can try to seal up any cracks or gaps around doors and windows or even in your walls. Another obvious but boring way of keeping the arachnids away is to do the dusting. However, a busy spider can build a web in just one hour, so you may find yourself constantly cleaning. And of course, if you can keep flies and other bugs out of your house, then spiders aren't going to have a whole lot of food to catch, maybe they'll just pack up and go somewhere else. There are also some herbal methods to put the spiders off. Peppermint oil is going to send a spider heading for the hills, as will eucalyptus. The double benefit of these essential oils? Your home's going to smell really fresh, or perhaps even a lot like toothpaste. A smellier traditional remedy for excess spiders is to use vinegar, but to be honest, I'm not really sure that I'd prefer the house to smell like the local chippy rather than put up with a couple of spiders. Another weird sounding trick? a bowl of walnuts, or even pop a nut into each corner of your house. While many humans have an irrational fear of spiders, many spiders have an irrational fear of walnuts. How does that even work out? Number 3. How to Kill Termites Greedy termites can munch their way through a whole heap of wood in no time, causing massive destruction to homes and other useful structures. There are a few different and perhaps even some weird ways to get rid of these on your property. A totally natural but kind of gross way to see off the termite colony is to bring in a team of nematodes. 
these are parasitic worms, <laughs> and they love nothing better than to snack on a termite or two. Mmm, tasty. If you introduce a bunch of these critters, they're just going to keep on reproducing themselves and eating the termites until they've all gone. Termites are vampires. Well, in the way that they also hate sunlight. So exposing them to a UV light is literally going to kill them. Sometimes just putting a piece of termite infested furniture outside in the summer sun will finish them off. Otherwise, UV lamps can be a pretty effective treatment. There are the usual stinky vinegar options, like mixing a half cup of vinegar with lemon juice and squirting them with the mixture. Or if you prefer a more hands-on, slightly mad approach, you can set a trap. All you have to do is just wet a piece of cardboard, wait for the termites to turn up for lunch, and then set fire. Taking down the termites in the process. Totally savage. Number two. How to get rid of ticks around your home. Ticks are actually pretty horrible. They carry deadly diseases. They're really not something you'd want in your house. They're often carried into the home on dogs who pick them up from the outside. The tick, when it's gorged on the dog's blood, will drop off and scamper away to a cozy spot in your house. So first things first, make sure you declutter. Less stuff means fewer places to hide. Also, check your pets when they come in from places with long grass or when they've been near wildlife. Launder any clothing that you may have worn in that area with ticks. Hot soapy water is the best thing yet again, and you can't beat the old classics. Also, clean your house, vacuum everything, and be sure to empty the contents carefully. You could also use a pesticide to kill any remaining ticks and their eggs. Boric acid is your best friend in all sorts of insect combating activities, but always read the label. And if all else fails, get that exterminator inside. Number one, how to get rid of crickets. Crickets, as far as I know, live outside. However, if you're in my house in the summertime, you'd have a different opinion. That's when they start invading your home that's pretty unusual, but also it's super duper annoying. The thing with these creepy crawlies is that they're loud. And when you're trying to record videos like this, it's really bothersome. Their favorite time to be loud? Well, it's right about now, when you want to be tucked up in your bed. First, you could try to stop them coming in. It goes without saying, but check that all the insect screens are intact and that there isn't a big old gap somewhere. Then you can get some glue traps, literally what they sound like. Pop these into warm, dark places that crickets like to hide, and they'll get stuck in them. Again, you could try boric acid, but like always, check the label and get proper advice before just chucking chemicals around the house. Just be careful above all else. Well, now I'm fully armed and ready to meet the next insect invasion with a barrage of deadly weaponry. What's bugging you, though? Hopefully there are some tips here to help you with that that you've learned. Let me know all about it in the comments below. Check out the other cool stuff that's on the screen right now, and I'll see you next time.